here. But but how does that tie into the ryacin poison and the Iranians? Because you did say that six months before it ended up coming out separate from you in the news there. Right. And, and it has come out you really did have all these however many computers it was that you'd handed out to all the police, the federal police there. How many computers was it total? And where's the whole Ryerson situation going? It was uh, a little over 80 computers total. Uh, the Ryerson situation, I, I don't want to discuss it at the current moment for security reasons. And um, uh, I can discuss everything else, the passports, because we, it, all, it all folds in. Um, there's a huge operation in Belize, and, and it's, it's getting unraveled uh, as we speak. The uh, Minister of Immigration, a guy named P Penner, was just removed from office for selling over 150 passports, one of which uh, was to a, um, a Korean who was in prison at the time and had never been to police. Now, Penner, when he was under oath, said that, uh, yes, I had, uh, you, I think you've, you read these same reports from the Belizean News, said that, yeah, we, I had a meeting with the gentleman on this date. Uh, and, you know, he, he explained everything that was happening. Well, on that date, he was in prison in Korea. Um, so this is how bad it gets. And Penner has been prosecuted. He hasn't been investigated. Uh, they're just letting it, letting it all slide. You know, John McAfee, uh, I've gotten to hang around with you quite a bit now. I've got to say, though, behind the scenes, too, why do they have that one guy on the Dos Equis, most interesting man? We need to get you as the new Dos Equis spokesman. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually... They were talking about you as the CEO of Microsoft. They were. They were. Uh, that would be a... What about the spokesman for Captain Morgan Rum? I mean, you're a spitting image. Work. Actually, I, I just did a most interesting man commercial for Quick Funder. Uh, which is a, I didn't know that. I See, did, I, I did. I, it came out on Monday. Aren't I a good brander? You're a I great do, brander. I should do that officially. It came out I know on, talent it when I see Monday, it. It's, it's almost like you started a company that made millions of dollars. Yeah. So, so I did it for Quick Fund. <laughs> That's a crowdfunding outfit of one of the new ones and one of the better ones in uh, in Atlanta. Uh, I like their style. I, th I think they have you know probably the best uh, security and, and the best approach of any of the crowdfunding outfits. So I did the. Uh, the uh, Quick Funder commercial, where I was the most interesting man in the world, and so the guys, will you pull up the Quick Funder commercial. I'm going to play that later. Yeah, this is going on YouTube under under. Because uh, all this cloak and dagger. Now, look, you did do black project stuff for the government previous I to did, yes. McAfee. I did. I did. I was. I worked for Lockheed on a black program. But uh, what's the secret? Because this does sound spy esque, CIA, defense intelligence, or corporate stuff. Uh, down in Belize. I mean, were they using you as a double agent? Is there a whole other story to this we don't know about? Trust me, if, if I were a double agent, would I be on your on your program? I mean, I would walk out the door, and it would be the U.S. government that would whack me, not the not the cartel. No, 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 no. I understand that, but but I mean, there's also good elements of the government. In my no, experience, I, I don't no think question. it's there's, there's there's no there's no ultimate bad and, and 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 ultimate good anywhere. There's a mixture, of course, but no, I believe me, I am not affiliated. I'm not a part of. Uh, any U.S. government covert operation. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're evading them, all the things you did, the Trojan horse computers, everything. I mean, that's real James Bond stuff. Because the real spies I've run into and FBI people and stuff, when we've been uh, you know, doing stories or trying to infiltrate or set us up, they are bumbling boobies compared to the work you've been doing. Well, uh, by and large, you're, you're absolutely correct. And that's because they have to adhere to the formula that the U.S. government or whatever agency they're working for makes them adhere to. Um, you have to be completely free. You've got to be, you know, a libertarian, so to so speak. So it's the compartmentalization ruining U.S. intelligence. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, for example, I'm one man. Uh, I'm on my own. Uh, and by hiring, you know, a, a few out of work, uh, of, uh, you know, young, young men and women, I was able to, to infiltrate every branch of the, the Belizean government. Admittedly, Belize Enact is the whole not whole country. Well, Sorry. former spy masters like, like Dr. Steve Pachinik, they've told me the system is scared of lone men. Yes, because we, the, we, we are unpredictable. I have given this man internal documents, internal memos from Belize, which are absolutely... Well, tell us what you can tell us about your findings that are going to be rolling out and are already on your site, some of them. I mean, give us in a nutshell what's going on, what happened, the groups tracking you. Okay, the, the biggest thing that I discovered and the biggest thing they're trying to cover up is, is the, the selling of passports and the bringing of questionable people into America through a very complex route. Uh, you can, let, let's say if I'm, I'm Iranian or, or uh, a pack, uh, from Pakistan, uh, and, and I, I want a new identity. I can come to police and pay anywhere from 150000 to a half a million dollars. I get a new identity, usually from someone who's died. My name is Muhammad Allah, and suddenly my new name is, is George Smith. And I have a passport proving I am George Smith. With that passport, I am free to move throughout all of Central America. 
All of Central America, un, un, unimpeded. So they're creating fake identities on an international scale, out yes. of Belize, and that's come out. Yes. And it's a major rat line. Absolutely. And so uh, to get into America, if I want to do it, you know, unbeknownst to America, I wander up to the southern border and, and get a mule to, to, to bring me across. And the cartels help with that. That's public knowledge. I mean, you've seen many reports in Belize where this is actually happening. The Belizeans know, but nobody else in the world is reading the reports. No one else even cares, it seems. Did you see any evidence that the U.S. or any other major government has its own people down there jacking into their database to know who these people are, or they don't even care? Well, certainly they know who they are. The Treasury Department keeps, for example, um, an organization chart of, of like the Sinaloa cartel, uh, all, the, all the cartels, the Medellins. Uh, and in that order, but sure, I mean the op, the the, the people they're bringing across. Because we had the head Iranian general say last month, we have sleeper cells in America. Yes. And we will attack you in asymmetrical warfare. Yes, yes, absolutely. And where do you think these sleeper cells are coming from? They don't fly in. But you said a year ago, a year ago on my show, you said Iranian sleeper cells are coming through with riots, and now you don't want to talk about it. Well, forget the ricin. They are coming through, and they have more than just ricin, Alex. There's all kinds of things that that they are bringing with them. Um, I can't talk about the ricin right now. I'm, I'm very sorry that I can't. I am, I am, I am sort of fighting for my life. I am, I am. I'm, I understand. Yeah. I am, I am dancing a very delicate dance. You've already got cartels after, after you. You don't want the Iranians after. I don't want the Iranians after me, sir. Okay, uh, it's bad enough as it is. So now, but but forget that part. We still have the the importing into America. Of foreigners of, of question, with questionable motives on a mass scale. We have this one man selling 100 and, 150 passports in a very brief period of time. We have um, group, uh, uh, it's, it's like, you know, okay, if you come to us with 50 people, we'll give you a group discount. I mean, it's, it's astonishing. And these 150 were, were just the 150 that were discovered. You know that it's much more than this. Um, so, so this is a serious problem. No one's talking about it. It's public knowledge everywhere else in the world. Public knowledge. But here in the, in the States, it's like, well, let's not talk about this. John Casaretto, investigative journalist. You've been burrowing into this for a long time. I looked you up, done a lot of great reports in the past. Uh, much of what he said has been already verified. But, but, but what else have you verified in his story? What do you think about it? Well, you know, I think the big thing here is, to me, there's been... You know, these passports is, is the big issue here is, is that, you know, we're hoping by doing this report um, that we can look at this, this evidence and start to, to bring this into the open. So perhaps people will, will further report this, will further look into this and start to ask questions. Why isn't anybody talking about this thing? Why isn't anybody talking about, you know, the way these agencies are operating and pretty much neglecting, uh, you know, the security of this country at the border. And these guys are, um, it's very similar to the app. You know, you have a passport, you can pretty much walk over the border and come into the country, you know, and do whatever it is that you do in this country. Um, and, you know, it's the same thing with, with uh, the Cognizant and the app. You know, if you allow it to happen, then it's, it's wide open. We're being told, give all our rights up because terrorists are everywhere. And they leave the doors basically wide open. Absolutely. Exactly. And Absolutely. nobody wants to report it because it's hurtful. It's hurtful to the, the image that we're strong and we're secure. And, you know, I, I think that people should start talking about this thing, particularly in this case where there's evidence that shows there's a country, you know, not that far away from here that's selling passports that, you know, there's been incidents of Chinese nationals, of uh, people of Middle Eastern descent showing up and, uh, and, and showing up, you know, being apprehended. And it turns out that their passports are fake. And, they and, and they're like Belizean. And yet, that is all over Central America. But here in the States, we have no reports of that. You have to, you have to actually go in and dig into uh, the old copies of, of Mexican and Belizean newspapers to find instances of, of Hezbollah that were actually arrested in Mexico with Belizean passports mm -hmm. with, with uh, European names, Mike Smith and, and Terry Jones. It, it, it's absurd. And yet here in America, do you read about it? Is it in the New York Times? Is it in the Wall Street Journal? Is it in the local paper here in Austin? Why do you think, because you, know, you were nodding your head earlier, uh, John, uh, whenever I mentioned that in press TV, the official Iranian news, their chairman of their joint chiefs, their head guy said, we have sleeper cells, we have asymmetrical warfare, we can strike America inside. That was an outrageous statement. It didn't even get picked up in the U.S. news. That'd be like if our chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Dempsey, said, we have sleeper cells in Iran. We can attack you from within. That would be sensational. 
mm. but they're not talking about it. It's like every time there's real terror threat, they won't discuss it. If it's fake and made up, it's just constant hype. That's what I've noticed. What do you think is going on there, John? Well, I think that, you know, clearly there's a lot of issues right now with this NSA and this government surveillance. Um, you know, they want a license to continue to, to surveil us, to, to watch everything that's going on using these phones, uh, you know, intercepting your, your communications, your phone communications, your GPS location and all of these things. So, you know, we're at kind of a, a strange point, I believe, that where I, I think that, you know, there's not a lot of attention being paid to actual, you know, investigative, you know, turning you know, ferreting out these these uh, these operations that that could be going on right here, right in, in different cities around the country. Um, you know, all these different organizations.